Hello, dear friend. I am Thomas Manton IV. I wanted to come to you with a word from the Lord today. This is very powerful. I've been talking about uh, in another series. I do so many series, and I want to call it Our Quest. I did number one, volume one, Our Quest for Happiness. That was an amazing, <laughs> amazing display of creativity and, and uh, the word of the Lord about that topic. And then our quest for manifested brilliance, which doesn't happen a lot. Today I want to talk about our quest for a stress-free environment. Our quest for a stress-free environment. There are several things you need to do because your environment, the Lord spoke this to me, and this is one of my famed quotes for many years, um, your quest, I mean, your, your, your quest for, for, for a purpose-filled life can only happen if you focus and get your focus on board with uh, the, the plan of God, you know, your dreams, your goals, the talent, the, what he's given you to do. And the Lord spoke to me very clearly, he said to me this. He said, he said, son, your environment will either pollute you or promote you, depending on what it is. Your environment will either pollute you or promote you, depending on what it is. Your friends could be like a prophecy of your future, another one. They could be like a wave that takes you out into dangerous water, or they could be a wave going the other way, the good way, that takes you into the harbor and then to the shore to a safe place depending on who they are and what they're about a third point i've never uh, seen any tragedy except by misplaced trust uh disloyalty you know and you know by people but misplaced trust with the wrong people you cannot trust the wrong people you'll have a real dilemma coming your way so we need to always pray for good people. You know, it's better to be by yourself for a while than have wrong people. I heard one great man of God, he said, you know, in my life, right, you know, in this point, and as far as I've matured and aged and, and gotten to this point, I don't want to be hurt. You know, I don't want to have any disinterest, dishonor, disloyalty, disrespect. You know, you, you gauge all those things and look at all those things, and then when that's there... You see the good character of a person that could never do you any harm. But con artists, they talk and they yap and they yap and they yap and they cause you, they'll cause you a lot of pain, a lot of stress, a lot of loss. One of the big gifts that a con person has is the gift of gab. You know, they talk, 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 talk. Can even make paint pictures with their words and smile at you and tell you like, um, you know, so many grandiose things. And then, and then when you believe them, that's when they get you. I have a dear friend uh, who told me, he said, Prophet, I, I was, uh, he was conned by, and he's a very rich man. And he said, I said, oh my God. He said it was so bad it put him in the hospital. And he looked different when I saw him. You know, things can happen to people that make them look different. They look different. They get so damaged, you know. It's really sad. And... Uh, God wants you to have a, a stress-free environment. The Lord is uh, very serious about you being protected and in a safe harbor, a safe environment, a safe domain, a safe dominion. That's as important as taking conquest. Now, when you take risk and go out into the world and begin to uh, do great things and pursue things, you know, wow, you're taking a lot of risk, you know. You can't stay, uh, or, or you, you can't stay in your comfort zone and be great. I could say that inversely. You can't be great if you're stuck in your comfort zone. So you think a comfort place, you know, where everything is just so sterile and perfect, sterile, perfect, clinical, you know, predictable. Well, you're not going to get much done. So, but you need to. Conquer the mountains of, you know, these giants, these creatures, these beastly ogres, you know. Look that up, O-G-E, O-G-R-E, ogre, it's like a beast, like a monster, like Shrek, you know, remember Shrek, the movie Shrek? 
he was the ogre, you know. But he was a cute ogre, even though he was ugly. <laughs> it's a children's movie, but I mean, a real ogre, a beast, you know. You, you, they're going to be out there, but you find ways to whip them. But in your inner circle, in your inner life, we need to keep that quest for stress, for a stress killers in a stress-free environment. You, you cannot uh, have any great success if you're always tossed about and all messed up by all kinds of emotional problems. Now, you know, people like to send out these words, and it's in the Bible, and I'll tell you why it's in the Bible in a second. Rest, you know, rest in him and all that. But that doesn't mean don't work. That doesn't mean not that you don't work. That means you, uh, you, you stay in a restful place of victory and authority in your emotions and in your well-being and in your environment while, you're do, while you are doing a lot of work. Because if you don't do a lot of work, you're not going to get rich. I was just writing that. I was writing that, and well, I'm going to make newsletters out of these. Oh, God. And I'm writing so many books. I'm quite the scribe from, from Heaven's Scribe on the Earth. I'm writing, God talks to me, he speaks to me such profound revelations and I'm documenting them and writing them and we're going to be putting them out in the barrage. I, I believe it'll be hundreds of books coming out around the world and uh, people will be able to get them in every format. I won't be able to keep up with trying to supply people with. I'm sure they will have a good hardcover or some master piece books that we'll you know, have as a special offer from the ministry, but... All the revelations, how, I mean, how long will it take to get them all marketed and put out all that way? I just, I just want to find a way to release them to the masses. And uh, my vision is to reach as many people around the world with the word of the Lord to help them. I love a quote by a dear mentor. He said, uh, uh, he said, many want to teach, but I want to heal. That's the way I feel, too. Want to fix your life and get it fixed. You know, some call that success strategy. A success strategy is prophetic. Yes, it is prophetic. You know, a lot of people preach and do things in the four walls and they have meetings and they have conferences and they have crusades and they have revivals and they don't teach anybody anything. It's just a lot of noise and a lot of, you know, hot air. See the water back there? Oh, Lord, hallelujah. And, yeah, and they, they just, you know, Carry on with all the stuff, thinking highly of themselves, making money, doing things, tantalizing people, but they're not being effective in causing change. Only the revelation by the Holy Ghost of the Word of God and also the, the Logos, of course, which is the written word, and the Rhema, which is the spoken word, and also the prophetic understanding, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding prophetically, uh, that God can, you know, get deep into someone's life and begin to help them. And I want to say this, another point, a, a major point. God wants you to be rich and you need to work hard, but you need to do it in a stress-free way. Stress is a, stress is a damager. It damages cells. It damages processes of the body. It, it causes pain. You know, there's scriptures that a broken spirit dries the bones. That's the arthritic condition, right? You, so you need to get your, your spirit healed and fixed. I pray that that'll happen in Jesus' name, that your emotions are well, that you forgive everybody, that you get free from everybody. And let me tell you something. The best revenge is success. The best revenge, I want to say that loud, the best revenge you could have against every enemy, every betrayer, every liar, everybody that's ever hurt you, anybody that's ever told you no, anybody that ever said, spoke ill of you, anybody that, that's ever tried to do anything to damage or hurt your life, you, you, uh, you, you, you just become successful. And you just become all that, all that you're dreaming, all that God wants you to be and, and do and have and become. And that will speak volumes to everybody and nobody can argue with it. And I'll give you the Bible for that. It says uh, in Psalm 23, he'll spread a table for you in the presence of your enemies. Remember that one? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. That means I will be abundantly blessed and rich. Now, if you want to be rich, you've got to be diligent. you will be very diligent, but you've got to work stress-free. That's You know the scripture that in Hebrews, it says, I think it's Hebrews 4, Hebrews 6, somewhere, Hebrews 4, I think it is. And Paul said, uh, the writer of Hebrews, we believe it was Paul, said many times, rest in, enter into his rest, enter into his rest, enter into his rest. That means there's a place in God. Jesus even did that. 
when he went to the mountain and rested in God and got in his presence, he got rejuvenated to carry the glory and the anointing with all the stress, all the problems in, in the world that were going on, all the craziness that was going on, all the Pharisees, Sadducees, wannabes, couldn't bees, aren't bees, idiots. <laughs> You know, they were out there, you know, trying to persecute him and attack him and mess him up and stop his way and all that. But you know what? <laughs> he, Jesus found the multitudes and miracles happened. But he had to have a place in God to connect, to increase the anointing, to increase the receptivity. Even though he was God, he was a man that then had to be anointed. Have you ever thought about that? You think, well, Jesus had the inside trick on the thing because he was just... Uh, he was put here, but he knew everything because he was God. No, he gave all that up to become the man, to be born of woman, so that he can walk in the power of God. And this is the testimony that's for you and me. The spirit of uh, prophecy can even be the testimony of Jesus, you know. We, the prophetic glory comes because we are walking in the light of his, of his glory and power. And you know what? He went there to make the sacrifice for us that the Holy Ghost and the power of God and salvation can come back upon us, and now we can walk in that glory. But in the evil world, you'll have warfare. In the evil world, you'll have... Jesus even said, in the world, you'll have tribulation, but be of good cheer, because I have overcome the world. Is that John 16, 33? I believe it is. John 6, 6, 6 says, These words are spirit and they are life. I love it. These words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. So another quest, a way to have a quest for a stress-free life, you need to speak correctly. You need to think correctly. You need to get a bad, rid of bad words, uh, unproductive words, negative words, and you need to get rid of negative and unproductive people. Because somebody is trying to cause a mix-up in the midst. So somebody, the devil... Wants to use as somebody that's non-linear, lineated, you know, aligned, aligned properly in the vision that God's given you. And you're, you're the weakest link. Remember that there was a TV show and that the weakest link, that means you're out. The weakest link can make the whole mechanism of the chain that runs the engine snap. So that weak link, you got to watch for that. Always be diligent and never forget about the purpose of God, about the plan of God, about the power of God. Never forget how, how far he's brought you. Never forget how much he's blessed you. Guard the flock. Guard your life. Guard your heart. Guard your house. Be diligent. Be careful. Don't leave everything to chance. Do all you can by the wisdom of God and, and try, you know, keep everything... I'm glad God's made me a teacher. I just revel. I marvel in this. I revel in this. I, I rejoice in this, in this glory. You know, you, you listen to this and catch the words I'm saying, the Lord's using me to say here, and, and document it and do it. And your life will become more stress-free. Now, number one, the number one stress killer, the number one stress killer is the power of the Holy Ghost being all around you, in you, moving through you, manifesting with you, through you, for you, in his presence, his fullness of joy. And at his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Powerful. So this thing about rest, you know, people said, don't worry all the trouble you have. Just rest in him. Cast your cares upon him. Rest in God. Some people can take that to mean to think that you just get lazy and do nothing. Just stop what you're doing. Now, this time's the rest. I remember I took a trip. I took a trip recently and I was shocked. I went I went to work, you know, and I went to there to work. I went there to do. And the first two, the first two and a half days, all I did was was rest. I didn't eat. I just slept. Didn't want to eat. Had no appetite. Maybe that was my three day fast. Just rested, 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 rested. Went to the spa, went to the gym, rested, slept, 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 slept. Didn't matter what hours, I kept sleeping until it got out of me. And I felt one of the reasons God brought me here was just to rest, to get myself rejuvenated, not with no external activities, just me resting. 
That's the rest. Now, then you get from that, and then you feel better, you feel rejuvenated, you feel revived. I know one man of God, he said something, and he said this to inner circle people. Uh, I was a, he was a, was a friend. And he said, sometimes you just go check into a hotel somewhere at a resort and just sleep. Get away from the house, get away from everything, and just go there for like a couple of days. And I thought, well, he's learned the secret because, you know, sometimes when you're in your environment, when everybody's screaming and making noise, it can kind of wear at you. But you say, well, this is my, if you're a man, this is my fatherly duty. My fatherly duty that I be here with the family. Yeah, but maybe you need to just go and sleep somewhere. And then all these things about health and, you know, vitality. So once in a while, that could be good. Take a holiday. Now, I don't want to try to, I don't want to sound cruel because somebody might not understand this, but I wonder if there's a way that, like, if a husband and wife want to rejuvenate themselves, they can leave the kids with somebody, maybe a family member. Not forever, you know, not being cruel and leaving the family and going away and disappearing. That's strange. I mean, God made the family unit to be together, but maybe just uh, for three days. Maybe a man of God himself can just go for like three days, you know, go into a conference, maybe it's many days, a couple of days before and just sleep. I'm talking to somebody. And it's shocking. You know, this is shocking. This is something we don't schedule this. We don't want to schedule this. We don't think we need to. We think, oh, God, you know. How can I do that when I have so many responsibilities, I have the family, I have all this? But it happened to me. I wasn't planning it. I flew somewhere to another continent, and I was so tired when I got there. Oh, my God, OMG. And after just resting for about a day and a half, two, two days, about two days. Because it went, you know, the time zones and all that, the clock around, one night to the next day, then the next night to the next day. It was like two whole days. I felt great. <sighs> Stress killer. Stress killer. Then you have a holiday where you take the kids. Take them. To enjoy the whole family. Do it. You know, I know people that schedule like their anniversaries, ministers of the gospel, powerful, powerful men. They schedule, they decided to schedule. Uh, so, you know, people just want you all the time. So they schedule these weeks where they have their anniversary and their birthday and their, their holiday time, you know. Uh, them and the wife, and they just go by themselves to a faraway remote island or somewhere and just rest, get rejuvenated. And you wonder why they can do such powerful things the rest of the year. All right. I think I made the point. That's, 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 that's in there by the Holy Ghost. I didn't plan to say that. Somebody sent me an offering. That's good preaching right there. Somebody sent me an offering. So the Lord is... Uh, I'm serious. The Lord is... is, is uh, Wanting us to understand that we have a long race to run. We have a big mission to fulfill. And we need to be strong and healthy and vivacious and full of power, full of vitality, full of wonder, full of glory, full of the anointing, and full of the good health, good wealth, all of that. God wants us to have it. A stress-free environment, our quest for a stress-free environment. Is it possible to have? Absolutely. We have to work on it. And the Lord is good as take, uh, taking the funny bunnies. Let me make a funny word here. Taking the funny bunnies out of your way. People that don't have the right character or they don't have the right motive or they don't have the right honor system toward you. They don't have the right respect for you or your ministry or your life or they don't have the right uh, agenda concerning you. Oh, I've seen that, man. You know, when you're growing in things and flowing in things and you're very well to do and then people just see you as a, someone to take advantage of. I know I've had my experiences. Oh, my. If we could only run the clock back <laughs> and redo it all again, knowing, now, knowing then what we know now, but not possible. Can you imagine, like, let's say you're 50 years old or 45 years old. Let's say you're in your 40s, 50s. Or, and you could turn the clock back to 3-0. 
But knowing what you know now, having all the wisdom and experience and expertise, expertise of experience that you've had and put you back in the 30-year-old uh, time frame and body, wouldn't you be happy? Oh, that would be... How much would that be worth? You'd pay anything. But someone goes, ah, now I like where I am. Oh, come on now. Come on now. Come on now. You think the aging process is funny? I just saw a picture of Dora, Doris Day. Doris Day, the uh, actress, you know, from the 50s. Hollywood actress. Now she's 97, her 97th birthday. She's old, man, and she looks totally different. But when you look deep into the countenance of the photo, deep into her facial feet, you can say, oh, yeah, that is her. It kind of, I see the resemblance. But take her from then and take now. How would you like? Remember Arnold Schwarzenegger in the 80s when he was doing uh, some new movies, yeah? He looked totally different than he does now. Now he's in his late 60s, yeah? If you say, would you rather be now or then? Of course, everyone would say then. That's why God is so good and smart that he's going to give us a glorified body uh, that when that time comes, you know, we're all going to be young looking people. Believe me, there's not going to be anybody walking with a stick. You know, my grandfather used to call it the stick is an Irish uh, way of saying it. They're from Ireland. The stick, you know, walk with the stick. Like, I don't want to do that, you know. <laughs> I think, I think, I wonder if he had a hip replaced, so I think he had one of those things done. And my mom had to think for the knees, you know. She said it was very painful, but I think it kind of worked after a while, but it wasn't easy to do that knee surgery thing. Lord, they're all in heaven now. My mom, my dad, my grandparents, I led them all to the Lord. They're all in heaven. But believe it, they're not walking around like, <laughs> now, nobody is. You think God's going to have some elderly person like bent over, like walking with a walker, you know, the walker on the wheels for the thing that rolls? You got to be kidding me. No way. Even the ancient ones, like Methuselah, lived to 965 years. Adam lived to 935 years old. Uh, the others, like 650. Enoch, I think it was 365, something like that. Years of age. Yep. And, but they were in the glorified sense back then. You know, I don't know if they aged like we age now. I don't think they did, but at that time, but then after the fact, but whoever's old, whoever was old and left the earth, when they get to heaven, they're not going to have an old, messed up, decayed body. Why it happens here on earth, I wish it wouldn't. But I'll tell you one way you can keep your aging process from going and you keep looking young is you, uh, you uh, keep the stress out of your life. Take enough healthy things, take enough things that, uh, you know, help you in your, your, your health and your, your vitality and your strength. But wrong people pray that they go. Pray that God exposes everybody wrong and they just get flown out of your life. If I could tell you the thing, the horrible things that someone could, when you have a wrong person in your world and the horrible things you find out, uh, about them and what things that they were doing uh, after the fact it would shock you it would shock you I think I could write James Bond scripts out of my own life and walk with God around the world not a joke but we're responsible in the now for cleaning the house keeping it all clean keeping it all safeguarded keeping it all uh, excellent brilliant right-hearted, full of the anointing, full of the Holy Ghost, full of the power of God. Very important. Very important. That's our job. Taking care of the temple of, of God. Um, I'm doing things in the gym now. I'm about to embark on this like diet program and all this to just get everything better, 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 better. We keep getting better and better and better from glory to glory. That's our responsibility. We have to be diligent in that. Resting in Him in the positional sense of being stress-free, but working very diligently every day. God doesn't want you to work less to get ahead. You have to work more, but you have to do it smart, not hard. Smart work is the key to getting ahead, not mere hard work. You know, hardworking people are poor most times. There are people that walk the road to get to work at 6 in the morning, and they don't leave till 6 or 7, they work 12 hours a day, and they're broke. 
I mean, they're very poorly paid and they work like... So it's not work alone that does it, but working smart. Another thing, to keep you on the path where God, where the fire is burning hot, you know, and everything is working well, uh, you ask God, like, God, what's the most important thing I could be doing right now? What's the best thing I could be doing today? And let me tell you something, he'll also use people to help you in your quest for excellence, in your quest for a stress-free life, in your quest for riches and wealth, healing and health. I'll do more on this quest, our quest, our quest, our quest. I feel, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling so good about it. And it'll become a book, of course. Um, but, uh, so just a few points here about a stress-free life. Let me pray for you right now. Father, thank you for giving my friend a stress-free world, a stress-free life. Every wrong person, I declare that you'll expose them and get them out of their way, away from them. And I declare that you will cause them to be as you promised, the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath, the blessed and highly favored, not disheveled and disgusted and in despair and deranged and denied and delayed and derided and deluded or depressed or any of those long list of the negative D words, but they'll be daring, dashing, determined, dominion-minded, and just blessed in Jesus' name. God wants you to succeed. He's going to give you the strategies also. Pray that. Pray for that. Pray that. Declare that. God, you're giving me strategies, brilliant ideas, witty inventions, new ideas, created creativity, ways of doing things, of getting the ministry, life, business further along. If you're working in an enterprise, that you'll be promoted there. If you're in business, that you'll prosper more and gain more uh, territory in... Uh, in your ministry, that you'll just reach the nations, you'll just do so much more. The Lord is really, really after that happening. He really wants it to happen. And He wants it to be stress free, that you could be free and blessed and not stressed. In Jesus' name. So be it. I'm Thomas Matthew the Fourth. Thank you for being my partner. There are ways on the screen you can do that, and I will see you on the next broadcast. Love you much. Praying for you. Remember Isaiah 48, 17, I am the Lord your God who teaches you to profit and leads you in the way you should go. I'm God's prophet teaching you to profit. I'll see you right here on the next broadcast. In Jesus' name, amen. Visit thomasmanton.com and we'll look for you there. In Jesus' name.